Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be looking at microbial enumeration analysis in SPSS. SPSS is actually a statistical package for social science. However, it's 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 so interesting that we find a lot of you mean the uh, um, analytical sciences trying to use SPSS to analyze their data. Yes, because uh, it gives you that opportunity to also do do that it's robust. So we're we'll using SPSS for descriptives and analysis of variance in this particular tutorial based on popular request by uh, some students. Okay, so let's do this. First of all, we'll look at the interface of SPSS. That's, that's how the interface looks like. We have a data view and we have a variable view. So before you can enter any form of data, you need to give the headings or you need to define the variables. So in this case, we are and, um, analyzing microbial enumeration data. And so we will be entering our, our data, the data we've collected from the microbial analysis. And here I'll be using a data uh, collected from the analysis of Wasa Wasa samples. I have used it previously in one of my videos that I was demonstrating how to do the same analysis using Microsoft Excel. So in your SPSS, you have to first define your variables. The first variable I'll be using is my sample ID. And notice that in SPSS, you cannot use the space bar when you are giving the name. So you need to use either the underscore or put it together. Once you try doing it's an illegal character. So simple ID. And I'm going to put my counts in block C. So my counts, no, it's fine. Because I was trying to use the space. Now the decimal, I want two decimal place for the counts, but the sample ID, I don't need any decimal place. My counts is actually numeric. There are no values to it. I'm going to explain these parameters in, in, in a jiffy. So the name is the tag you give the sample the type is a type of data it can be numeric it can be string it can be uh, comma or scientific notation dates and things like that then the width is how long your data will be or your characters will be so so are you going to type characters more than eight then you can increase this but i'm going to use numbers and the numbers will not be more than even two digits so eight is okay do you want to have decimals after your numbers or you want to keep it at zero in the key here how do you want to label this is at this portion where you can put in your long list or long name with the space bar so let me label this as my sample id and this as my microbial load in log cfu per gram units actually for this you can use the space bar the values we use the values when you want to code for a particular variable so in this case we would have to code for the sample id i'll explain that shortly and the columns too is just like the width how and why you are going to type in your columns then the alignment, how do you want the, some, the, the figures to be aligned? Should it be to the right, to the left, the center? 
and uh, measure. Is it going to be a scale? Is it going to be ordinal or nominal uh, data? If you are not too sure, you can leave it uh, leave it like that. And then the row is an input. So my sample IDs in the data view. I want SPSS to see my samples as numeric so that I can analyze between them and, and so forth. Like analyze the different uh, samples I have. So in my data, I have three samples, WAM, WLM, and WCM. So I'm going to give those codes here another values. So value one. It's going to be WAM. Value 2 is going to be WLM. Value 3 is going to be WCM. That's my sample code. And I'm done with that. So I can now come to my data view to enter my data. Now the trick is this. It's sometimes uh, difficult when you are going to enter a lot of data because you cannot drag down in SPSS. So you can do all of that work in Excel and copy and paste it in SPSS. So let's see how I'll do it here. So I'm in Excel and supposing I have 20 data sets all being WAM, I'll just put the one on the two side and the 20 side and drag it down to fill it up and now i can copy all of this into my spss but thankfully my data is just uh, in duplicates so i'm just working with one one two two three three and that is all i'm going to copy the total counts I'm going to copy it as values inside here. So one one is for W A M two two is for that three three is for that. Notice something I did in the uh, in the in the in the SPSS. Notice that in the SPSS, when I was defining my variables, I made sure I had a sample ID and accounts, and that will appear as the headings here or the first row title. And so I can just copy the data I have in Excel in that same format and paste it in SPSS. And here we go. Remember, I made the counts have two decimal places. So let me try increasing it to four and let's see what happens here. I have the four decimal places. So that's the essence of it. Let me try increasing it beyond the eight. And it can happen because the decimal place is too large for the field. However, I can increase this to 10. And then now I can increase the decimal also to uh, 10. Sorry. All right, it couldn't fit up. So let's keep it at the eight and then let's work. So now with our descriptives, we have some data here. We want to find out how the data looks like. So I'm going to go to, mm -hmm. so that's how the data looks like. One, one, two, two, seven point two one, and all that. I'm going to analyze, and I want the descriptive statistics. So here I can have the frequencies and I can have the descriptives. But I want descriptives. So mm. Mm. 
Je vous aime bien. 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 Sample ID. Uh, we have six uh, samples in all. The range in terms of microbial load 1.68, the minimum, maximum, the minimum standard deviations. So that is with my descriptives. Um, Yeah, so this, this that descriptive was just describing uh, the values you have in a sample ID and then the counts. But actually, we want to describe um, the samples as in WAM and not the uh, numbers or parameters we have here. So, you can still analyze and then analyze that under our mobile def descriptives and ANOVA. So with ANOVA is an analysis of variance with comparing means. So we we'll go to compare compare means one way ANOVA and then um, so we can put our sample ID at the factor and then the dependent list is the response. So when you go to options, you can select the descriptive if you need that. The means plot if you need that, but we want just the descriptives. And then go to OK. So now these are our counts. And then the various samples, WAM, WLM, WCM. I'm sorry, my window is not showing. Yeah, okay. So W A M W L M uh W C M and then uh we have our mean as standard deviation, standard error, lower bound, upper bound, minimum minimum and maximum. And the ANOVA table is here. Uh, you can compare this to what we had in the Excel, and I am sure it's the same thing. The mean square, the F statistic, and then the significance, which is the same as the p-value. So is this p-value that you compare to your 0 0.05 and tell whether it's significantly different or not? In this case, it's less than 0 0.05 at 95% confidence. So there is a significant difference between sample WAM, WLM, and WCM. So we're in another table. Yeah, that's another table between the groups um, and the significance is a 0 0.01. All right, so if you drop it in the, you can drop it in the comment section and then in uh, subsequent videos, try and then answer those questions. Thank you for watching this. If you found value, consider liking this video and sharing with others as well. See you in my next video.